And that's something you quite often hear that you should get the right people, but quite often it's left at that also that, okay, you, you know, it's easy to say to get the right people, but how do you actually, what, what are some of the factors around that to, to actually get to, to hire or even find the right people? That's a really tough one. <laughs> like, uh, before you go into hiring anyone, you need to at some, some level know like what you are hiring for. So that's that's where you that's where like uh, based on discussions with other other growth companies and other startups, will let, where a lot of firms go south, that you don't really know well enough what kind of traits, what kind of competencies you should be looking for, uh, and and it changes over time. That's really natural. Like uh, when you, when you are a four people startup, you need to hire kind of like more generalist kind of people who can do everything from <laughs> supply to demand to like for instance myself handling everything from accounting finance supply then actually doing the testing of the phones myself bringing those to customers with a bus or with a bike <laughs> during the first weeks and purchasing those from like people's homes because you know we we had no cash to uh, we had no cash or no funding to run the business at scale in the really first days so you need to need to have really flexible pool of people as your first hires, especially if you're going on a, on, a, on a shoestring budget. And then once you grow, the further you grow, the more structure you need and the more kind of like uh, T-shaped T-shaped people and more specialist kind of roles. And that's what you need to be extremely good at. You need to know where your company is heading. Otherwise, you're going to make a lot of mistakes there. And that <laughs> that will will be seen in the culture and everything you do. At what point did you start fi- uh, identifying growth factors uh, in the company, and what were they? Uh, um, definitely, like uh, growth was like was and has been one of, one of the key focus areas as well. Without that, you you will have nothing. Like uh, you need to grow extremely fast, especially if you are you're running a startup and you are living on funding. So when you have only a few months of runaway left, you need to grow. Otherwise, you won't get the next funding round and you'll die. So basically, <laughs> that has been one of the key focus areas since day one. And uh, and and I would say, like uh, as, I, as I said in the beginning, being obsessed about the customers is definitely that. So you need to be in really close connection with your target group. When finding the product market fit, you need to gather data from the field all the time. When you're when you're going from zero to one, it's much more like uh, you won't have the numbers. So you need you need you need to gather qualitative data and then the data from public sources and other sources that are available. But when you're creating a new market, as as we have been doing like, and changing customer behavior in this space, um, it hasn't been so easy, especially in in the in the early days we didn't have a lot of public data available in the market so so then you we we needed to make assumptions on the uh, on the interviews and and everything with with smaller sample sizes yeah that's something that we actually wanted to touch uh, upon a bit is the category creation thing that it's very often said that it's maybe not the best thing to be the first mover because you make all the mistakes and, and now you're creating a kind of a new market. You you have had the used phone markets, but you, you talk about the refurbished phones. So w- do, you, do you see a threat here that someone will, you know, just, you know, copy you and, and, and put more money into it and, and run run by you? Or do you think the market is big enough for, for many players? Or how, how do you even approach this this dilemma? Because... You know, it's something that hasn't existed before, as you said. Yeah, it's definitely big enough for many players, and and in, and in a way, uh, it's an execution game, and that's what I like about it. <laughs> like, uh, frankly, frankly said, like when you have, a, once you have the best uh, capabilities, best talent in your team, you you shouldn't be too worried about that. Like, um, there is not much we can patent here, so so <laughs> you cannot be too worried about competition. You cannot be like course you cannot be arrogant like uh in a way uh para- paranoid optimist is uh, is a good word word when like or a good phrase when when thinking about it like you need to keep your eyes open eye- eyes open for any threats in the market anything that might might be out there and always look out for the kind of like uh better more innovative services in the market than other companies out there but cannot really worry about it too much 
and when we when we are at uh, fro- like uh, front runner and growing as fast as we are like at the moment three to four x still year over year still kind of like uh, from these numbers it's 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 gonna take a few years for for anyone to catch us in a way and and the market is also big enough for multiple players so if you that that grow so you you're gonna be able maybe to sustain that kind of growth rate even still uh, you just raised some some new funding quite a big round so you should have the, the have the cash but maybe looking into the more specific ways of, of growing it's probably something that's very interesting for many people running their own companies on online you're an online business basically purely uh so um what are some of the strategies you have used to to achieve you know more specifically like to to actually where do you acquire users and how do you think about that that kind of um things sure so yeah once you're growing from zero to one it's really simple like uh, <laughs> back in the days it was just uh you just try out some marketing you can ev- even like uh i like i like some of the uh, some of the examples of how how Airbnb started, for instance, back in the days, and how they kind of like uh, hacked Craigslist in a way, just put their advertisements out there. Once you're going at basically <laughs> at the shoestring budget with no funding, we did a lot of similar things back in the days when acquiring the first users, and then listened to all the feedbacks from them, so we could improve the service as fast as possible. Now, when when you when you have when, once we have found the product market fit. Now it's more about like uh, we need to think, we need to constantly think to what markets we need to go and how fast we need to grow there, how how fast we need to find the product market fit. You need to plan a lot in advance like and, and not just like uh, a few months but <laughs> much longer cycles because you need to also have the right hires in at the right, at the right time and all the like gun charts and everything everything else ready. So it's it's very different. Uh, what comes to marketing and user acquisition? That's that's yeah, that's done uh, mostly online. You use uh, social media mostly, or do you also yeah, you're mostly online? So not that much of like these bigger brand awareness things. That it's more tactical, more measurable. You know, you put one euro in, you get hopefully more than one euro out. Well, there is the brand awareness factor as as well that you cannot create a category without without being be, without being really good at that. So, but that can be done online. That can be done through radio, TV, of course, like uh, outdoor display ads and, and 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 everything else. But but that can be done online as well, like uh, through Facebook, YouTube, you, know, you name it. So.